How are you doing? This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave, the founder of the highest paid part-time job in the World Option Training Academy. And what we're going to discuss today is what faction do you belong to? And the reason why we're going to talk about this is because I want to try to help you understand why some of your needs may not be getting met in the real world and how potentially you could go about getting some of your needs met in the real world by creating a structure to do that. But most importantly, understanding the importance of creating a structure to do that. So the first question you want to kind of ask yourself is what faction do you belong to? Right. If you understand what a faction is, what factions in the real world are you currently a member of? So you could be talking about fraternities, sororities. You could be talking about organizations. You could be talking about churches. You could be talking about um, groups and clubs, anything that is an organization that's helping you get something done in the real world is what we will use the definition of faction for. It is different definitions of faction, but we're going to use that particular definition for this discussion. So the first question you want to ask yourself is what faction do you belong to? And a lot of people, if you ask them that, they're going to struggle answering that question because what they've done is kind of built their life out based on social media and the internet. And I'm part of the, um, I don't know what the Beyonce group is. That's internet stuff. That's entertainment. Nicki Minaj used to have a group. Uh, what they used to tell a lot of social media influencers is that create a name around your little group. And every time you come on, speak to your people that way. The challenge is that that's not in the real world. OK, and so we're going to kind of talk about some of the limitations of people building out this false reality on the Internet. But how things really get done in the real world and the important of factions. Right. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So we want to define faction first. So we can get into like a common understanding of what we're talking about. And it's going to be an organized group within a larger group. OK, it doesn't have to be off. off it doesn't have to naturally or all the time be a dissenting group. What it is going to be, it's going to be a. A organized group within a large group. And I want to you know, use the term organized to be really, really important. You want your faction to be somewhat organized. Because if it's not, it's going to be hard to accomplish the goals. Right. And then therefore, that's why you see that a lot of these groups that you're seeing are not effective because there's really no organizational structure under them on, on any level. It's just a bunch of people in one environment, but there is no kind of organizational structure. Right. So here's the problem that a lot of people have. Their needs are not being met within a larger group. And most people will experience this as a group gets bigger and bigger and bigger. People are going to experience that our needs are not being met. And the reason why their needs are not being met is because of factions. What I want you to understand is that as a situation or as a group of people get larger, those groups will naturally create factions within the larger group. Those factions will look to control resources within that larger group. They'll look to control resources. As a result, other people will not get their needs met. Right. If the people that are not getting their needs met don't create factions that now get their needs met, they will always not get their needs met. Because the reason why the people created a faction in the first place is so they can control resources. They're not going to stop their resource control because they figured out that you're not getting your needs met. Now, what we have in this particular society now, because it's very, very sophisticated, is they go and create a lot of distractions to distract the largest groups of people to realize that their needs are not getting met. Right. So they create a lot of distractions. So you never realize it. Then you also don't know how to get your needs met. You haven't been educated and trained in that particular area. While the smaller factions suck up all the resources. Right. So you have to first come to the reality or come to the understanding is that your needs are not being met within the larger group. Until you realize that that's a problem. Right. And it's not somebody else's problem. It's your problem. You're going to always be in the same situation. And so what I try to help people understand, and I used to teach this in my dark persuasion course, is once you understand how the world is really composed and you get out of this kind of like Anglo-European conspiracy theory, right, stuff, and you really start to understand how this world is really built, it all starts to make sense. But you got to get out of the reptilians living under the living under the earth, you know, living, you know, you got to get away from that stuff because that also was a bunch of falsehoods created to get you distracted. And just start to really understand how human behavior and how the world really works in real life. And then the stuff that you're seeing in front of you is going to start to make sense to you. OK, so let's go to the next one. So here's a solution. Create a faction around getting the needs of the faction met. Once you understand that 
the needs of my needs are not being met within a larger group. The solution to that, the rational thing to do that is to create a faction around getting the needs needs of the faction met. So what I do is I organize a group of people and I say, how can we get our needs met within the larger group? Right. Because that's the most intelligent thing to do. If I realize it, the not most intelligent thing to do is to sit around and cry about it. OK, the most intelligent thing to do is to go do something about it because I've identified that that is a particular problem. OK, so let me give an example of what I'm talking about. So this is the name of the trading group that I created, but it's really not a trading group from the standpoint is that I don't call trades out. But let me explain something to you. I work with black owned businesses for years. Did marketing, consulting, everything. And one of the things I realized is that most of our people that was in business did not realize what they were actually involved in. They didn't understand the markets. They didn't understand how capital markets worked. They're getting like a lot of random information thrown at them, but nothing's comprehensive. I also understood that I was dealing with a lot of people in my environment that didn't even understand how markets function. Right. And one thing I understood is that we produced thousands of formerly educated black folks. Right. And I'm using black as a colloquialism. We're going to talk about that later. But we produce thousands of formerly educated black people that don't have the ability to help black folks. So we have to understand that the education is inefficient to get the result that we were looking for. So that's the problem. So then the question now becomes is that how can we educate people properly to get the result that we're looking for? Because we understand that we are not trained and educated properly in this particular environment. So we live in a, a very much a market based environment. Right. That's very much skewed towards financial markets. This is not a States of America. It's one of the largest financial markets in the world and one of the largest financial markets in the history of the world. I wouldn't be surprised if it eventually comes out that aliens have invested in our financial markets. That's how robust our markets are. And we don't understand anything about these markets. So then we have an economic issue that presents itself in front of us. We don't understand how it's structured and how it's composed because we don't even understand what we're involved in. Another thing is that people can sit in front of us and they can hot button us. They can talk to us about things and we don't even understand what they're saying because we don't even understand how these markets actually function. So the reason why I'm not a good candidate to get on a lot of these people's shows is because they can't hot button me. I want to allow a quote unquote black spokesperson to speak for me. If I know that they're misrepresenting the facts of the situation. Right. So we take the situation of, of reparations. You can't hot button me with stuff like how we're going to pay for it. You can't hot button me with the fact that, well, you know, my family uh, was not involved in slavery. So why should I be paying for it? You can't hot button me with any of that because I actually understand how these financial markets work. And I can show you examples of the fact that we're financially responsible for actions that took place in the Middle East, even though we had no involvement in that action. I'm financially responsible for that. I'm on the hook for that situation financially, even though I had no involvement. My descendants are going to be on the hook for that financially, even though they have no involvement. The reason why I can discuss policing the way I can discuss policing, because I understand my financial responsibility to government. So you can't hot button me with all this defunding, yada, 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 because I understand from an economic standpoint, I'm financially responsible for the behavior of police because I'm financially responsible for how government agents conduct themselves. So you can't hot button me and get me upset and, because I know that one, I'm financially responsible for their behavior. So if I'm financially responsible for their behavior, I can offer what I expect out of their behavior because I'm financially responsible for their behavior, because I understand how municipal how municipalities, right, how they build out their police department. I understand how states build out their police department, I understand how county governments build out the police department. I understand when somebody sues police and they get a settlement, I know where the money comes from. Right. So this is where we have been thoroughly miseducated. And the problem is, right, nobody, all these Negroes that we produced in formalized education, none of them have been able to figure out how to solve these problems. They have been able to solve the problem of them getting employed, them getting housing, uh, them building out a life for themselves, but they can't solve the problem of a faction. So one thing I said is that I'm going to build an organization. I'm going to build a group to where we're going to be able to have these discussions. 
And you're only coming in to discuss these particular topics. Everything else is off the table because one of the problems we have is that because we haven't been taught to focus on these issues, people show up to talk about everything else except that because they feel incompetent around this particular issue because they have not been exposed or trained on how to talk about this issue. So to deal with their feelings of incompetency, what they do is they either one, don't participate or they try to make something else the topic. Right. But we can sit on here and talk about relationships for 12 hours and never run out of stuff to talk about. So you have to realize when you have millions of people who as a group are incompetent around the issues of economics, the markets, really civics, you're going to get the result that you're currently seeing right now in America. Right. So you have to realize it's a problem. And what are we going to do to solve the problem? So I did that because, like I said, I kept seeing the problem over and over again. And the solution was bigger than just me solving the problem for my individual self. Right. Because I'm going to talk about we live in a world that's controlled by factions, not controlled by individual people. So me solving an individual problem doesn't solve anything. It makes me very vulnerable. Right. Because I'm by myself in a world controlled by groups of people. So if 30 people decide that they're going to beat me up, there's nothing I can do about it because I can't beat 30 people. You understand me? So me doing something individual is not a solution to the problem. So the fact that I've been able to help people solve this problem and then they now can go solve the problem in their own local area, I've done more than all these Negroes with all the education with all the millions of dollars behind them. And I'm not saying that to brag to you. I'm saying that to show you how inefficient these people were with the attention and resources that they were getting. But many of them are paid to not fix the problem. They're not being paid to fix the problem. Nobody paid me to not fix the problem. So what I did was I tried to figure out how to fix the problem. And I'm not saying that to put on airs. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just trying to get you to understand how you can have the same impact in your area too if you just decide you're going to go fix the problem, right? Because there's not a lot of competition to fix the problem. There's a lot of competition to not fix the problem. Right. So let's let's keep going. So what I want you to understand, let me get back to the main slide. Is doom, doom, doom. the country is divided into factions. We talked about that. This country called America has over 300 million people. Right. It's divided into multiple factions. So I got a video on my Patreon about ethnic enclaves. Those are one factions. Right. Notice I didn't say racial enclaves. I said ethnic enclaves. And I use Orlando as an example of ethnic enclaves. We got a Brazilian section of, of, of Orlando. We got a Puerto Rican section of Orlando. We got a Vietnamese section of Orlando. We got an Anglo section of Orlando. Don't think we got a Chinese section of Orlando. Right. We got a talked about Anglo. We got a quote unquote black section of Orlando. We got a West Indian Caribbean section of Orlando. We got a Haitian section of Orlando. Orlando's divided into ethnic enclaves. I lived in Houston. Houston got a Chinese section. I lived where the Chinese people lived in Houston. Houston got an Indian section. I lived where the Indian people lived in Houston. Right? They got an Anglo section. They got a Vietnamese section. Vietnamese people out there in Houston getting real busy. Real busy. Right? Then they got a black section. So Houston is broken down into ethnic enclaves. And those ethnic enclaves, they also form factions. So the country is divided in factions. All of this, you know, melting pot stuff. It's, these are these are things they get the masses of people to believe in to make them non-competitive. America's not a melting pot. It never has been. It wasn't built that way. They didn't build this country for it to be a melting pot, right? These are the stuff they teach you in school to make you non-competitive. So we got 300 million people divided into multiple factions, right? The question is, what faction are you involved in? So what I want you to understand is that. If you think the main faction is a Republican Democrat, it's because you're not in a faction that has influence in those two groups. So we get this overriding narrative in America is that everybody's going to split into these main factions, a Republican Democrat or conservative liberal. Right. I've had people come on this. It was weird to me. I've had people over my life say I must be a conservative and then other people say I must be a leftist. Right. Neither one of them understand my ideology because they're from like somewhere else. They're not like I said, I'm from a very specific state. Well, our history is different than the majority of the country. So they wouldn't understand my politics unless I told it to them. Right. Because they're playing the mainstream game. And I'm not from a mainstream state. I'm from a state where the majority of cities is based around Spanish last names. Right. So what I want you to understand is that the majority of the country is playing Republican, Democrat, right, left, liberal, conservative. And they think 
that these are the main factions, which they're not, but because that they have no influence in the two groups. So because they don't have any influence in the Republican Party, they're just a generalized Republican. Oh, they're just a generalized conservative. If they have no influence in the Democratic Party, they're just going to call themselves a general Democrat or call themselves, I'm, I'm on the left. They're just very general. It's because they're not in a faction that has influence in those two groups. The factions that have influence in these two large political parties, they identify around a faction that has influence in these two large groups. Right? They don't identify around anything else because they're members of a faction. Okay? And so that's what you really got to understand. Most people don't know what faction they're in. Okay? So let me give you some examples of what I'm talking about. So here's some faction examples, right? Christian conservatives. So people might remember we had a Christian conservative faction that were very influential inside the Republican Party, let's say maybe 10, 15 years ago. Now you got this faction now called white Christian nationalists. They call themselves Christian nationalists, but really they're white Christian nationalists. They're racist uh, white Christians. And with Christian being a marketing term, because you won't find the term Christian anywhere in the Bible. So it doesn't exist in the Bible, right? So they call themselves Christian nationalists, right? Because these are people that believe that God is an American, right? So you just got to realize their ideology. They think God is an American. So they think God is a respecter of America. So I'm trying to figure out what God was doing before America was founded. But that's a different question. So you got a faction that's called white Christian nationalists, but they call themselves Christian nationalists. We're really they're white racist Christian nationalists. You have Zionists in America. That's another faction which Zionism is a political movement started by some Jews. I forgot what year it was, but it's really a political movement. Many Zionists are atheists because it's a political movement. It's not a religious movement, right? Then you have APAT. That's another faction inside the United States. They're the one to make sure all that aid gets sent to Israel. They get $3 billion a year. They got another 14 billion this year. So this year they're going to get 17 billion of taxpayer dollars sent to Israel. APAC and the Zionists are the two factions that are primarily responsible for that. They have spokespeople in the United States like Ben Shapiro, Mark Levine. Those are their spokespeople to make sure that that faction has representation in the mainstream media. Right. Then you got another faction called the Congressional Black Caucus. You go to their website. They tell you what they're supposed to represent. These are all different factions. You notice none of these people identify under Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, right, left. That's not what they're involved in. Because APAC has representations in both political parties because the goal is to make sure that money flows to Israel. The goal is not to identify under any kind of right, left, conservative. None of that means anything to them, right? This means something to the, you know, 200 plus million Americans who are not part of a faction. So they identify by these very tertiary type identifications that don't mean anything because they're not competing for resources. APAC is competing for tax dollars. That's a resource. They want things to go their way. They're not competing for like Facebook likes. They're not competing for attention on social media. They're competing for real dollars in the economy. So you got to really start to understand how factions really shape political policy in, in the country. Okay. Next thing, your race is not a faction. Okay. Your race is not a faction. And so a lot of people are going to be confused because what we've done in America, especially with what we call black people, is we created what we call collective black guilt and so what we mean by collective black guilt is that like let's say when we were on plantations if one black person did something everybody got blamed for it if they said one black person created an assault somewhere they would blame all the black people for this they had something to do with it then once we were no longer slaves you look at like rosewood florida a white lady said that a black man raped her which was false she really was an affair with a black man and her husband found out so what they did was they burnt the whole black town. So what America did is it created this collective guilt around being black. Right. They correct this collective guilt around being black. So what it did was they got themselves to they got black people to believe that race. Right. Is this faction. It's really not. I'm going to explain to you why it's not. But it only comes in America. Right. Because what America did was make black something that everybody was collectively guilty of. So this is why black people a lot of times want to be the only black person in an environment because why they worried about if another black person comes in the environment and makes them look bad, it's going to fall on them. Because this is what America has done to us. 
So it makes black people responsible for the behavior of all black people. So the way you make yourself look good to white people is you down talk black people to white people to show them I'm not one of those black people. Now, you notice white people don't do that. White people didn't wake up after that dude shot all them people in Maine and worried about what white folks was going to think about them. They don't care because America was not built on collective white guilt. So this white dude and he's the, the uh, you know, this is one of many white people that have done these mass shootings. And white people didn't wake up the next day and say, you know what? All white people get blamed for what this white guy did. They just go about their business. They call it mental illness and go about their business. If this was a black person to do that, they would be talking about what's wrong with black folks. And then they get black people to buy into this stuff with them. So then they reinforce it amongst other black people. But your race is not a faction. It's that it may be your race. You may identify around an ethnicity, but it's not your faction. I'm going to kind of show you what I'm talking about, right? But it's not a faction. Black has become an ambiguous term. Nobody can really tell you what black means anymore. It's ambiguous. So what I mean by ambiguous, it doesn't have a real strict definition. Because it doesn't mean you got black skin. See, black doesn't mean you got black skin. Because most people that call themselves black don't have black skin. Right? It's, so it's really ambiguous. And I'm going to kind of show you what I mean by it's ambiguous. Black community is an ambiguous term created by TV producers. So when people say, well, the black community, who are you talking about? You're talking about 40 million people? 40 million people located where? Where is this one place called the black community? Where does it exist in the real world? Ask somebody to point it to you on a map. Right? Majority of black people in the United States live in the southeast. So what if you're a black person and you live in the northeast? You're part of the black community? What if you're a black person? I had a person take my class. He lived in Seattle. What if you live in Seattle as a black person? Are you still part of the black community? Where is the black, if you understand the definition of community, where is the black community at in America? Is it in one place? Then how do we define for every black person inside of the United States and say, well, the black community thinks yada, yada, yada. It doesn't really make any sense. It's ambiguous, right? Urban community, ambiguous term created by TV producers, right? I'm from Florida. I know a lot of black people that don't live in cities. Haines, there's no, there's no city in Haines City. There's no city in Polk County. Polk County is the sticks, right? There's no city in Del Rey, right? There's no city in, in Avon Park. There's no city in Sebring. I've really been around the state of Florida. There's no city in Palatka. These aren't urban areas. A lot of black people live in there though, but there's no urban areas. There's no city in Clewiston. There's no city in Belle Glade, right? I know where the big cities are in, in Florida. It's Orlando, Tampa, Miami, Jacksonville. Those are the big cities. Uh, Bradenton, Manatee, big football area. No big cities up there, though. So this urban community, what do they mean by urban? These are another ambiguous terms, but they'll try to define black people by saying they're urban. These are marketing terms created by TV producers. Right? But they're really ambiguous terms. that They won't allow you to build a faction around this because there's really no definition about what I'm talking about. Let me show you what I mean, right? So a Yoruba, who's also what they're going to classify as a Nigerian, which is also another false definition because Nigeria is a colonial state created by Anglo-Saxons. There is no Nigeria. Nigeria doesn't exist, right? Nigeria doesn't exist, right? That's the problem with these, these colonial states in Africa. They really don't exist. They're just a figment of somebody's imagination. Most of them don't even have real borders, right? They don't even have real borders, so they really don't exist. They're really not nation states, right? But a Yoruba, which is a tribal identity, Nigerian lands in America. They all of a sudden become black, okay? So they get the same classification as you and your people have been here 500 years. How does that work? Black person lives in the USA. They want to have children with non-black people and not associate with black people. That's one example of a person that we call them black. They live in the USA, but they don't want to have children with black people. So they want to eliminate their genealogy, right? They want to get rid of their phenotype through breeding, right? They are student to Thomas Jefferson. Okay, cool. Black person lives in the USA and is invested in developing their local area that is 90% black. That's another type of person living inside the United States. So we got all three type of people living inside the United States, okay? So then the question you want to ask yourself is, my bad. Let me go back to here. The question you want to ask yourself is that these people are the same 
but they don't have the same ideology. They're not the same. They don't have similar ideology on life values, theology, yada, yada, yada. So what we're told to do in America is to believe that all these people are the same, which hurts you from creating factions. Right? Because I went to college with a lot of Nigerians. You know what they organized around? Being Nigerian. They didn't really spend a lot of time around, quote unquote, black Americans. They spent a lot of time around their own people. I didn't have no issue with it. It was whatever. But that's what they spent a lot of their time around. OK, a black person that lives in the United States that is. Purposely or intentionally seeking out. To eliminate their phenotype, their gene pool by having children with non black people because they don't like being black. What do I have in common with that person? Right. I don't have nothing in common with that person. You know what I'm saying? So what we don't have similar ideology on life. We don't have similar values. We may not have similar theology. Why are we all being grouped together? Because being black is ambiguous inside the United States because it's about, it's about collective guilt. So this is why back in the day, people would argue and they still do today. A Dominican comes here and they're like, I'm not black. Because they don't want to be associated with blackness. I'm not mad at them. Sammy Sosa doing all that stuff to his skin because he don't want to feel like he black. Right? Cubans coming over here and saying they not black. I'm Cuban. They, they identify around a nationality. They don't want to be identified with being black. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to tell you. Africans coming over here and they only black when it's time to get the benefits that black Americans have advocated for through the system. They're black when it's time to get the benefits. But then when they get around their people, they're Yoruba or they're Nigerian. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? So you got to realize that nobody really believes in this stuff except us to where we're black and everybody that has a, you know, a similar skin tone or similar look, right, are, are, are just like us. But in reality, they're not like us and they don't want to have nothing to do with us except when it's time to benefit from the work that we've done in this country because they haven't done that work in their country and they don't want to do it. They want to come over here and jump on the bandwagon that our people built, right? But if you can't deal with black people in Africa, you sure can't deal with white folks over here, right? Because you ain't seen nothing yet. So if you can't deal with black people in Africa or black people in the Caribbean, you can't deal with white folks over here because you ain't seen nothing. So that's what I want you to really understand is that these people are not all the same. One thing black people in the United States got to realize is that we're really multiple ethnic groups. I've known black people in Africa that can trace their lineage back a thousand years. I knew a girl that was a Zulu from, from South Africa she can trace her lineage back to where white people didn't even know they were South Africa. Way before the, the, the Boers or the Portuguese or anybody ever showed up, she can still keep tracing her lineage back because she's a Zulu. She's part of that tribe, right? She don't have a mixed ethnicity. Black people inside the United States are mixed with a lot of different Africans. A lot of us also got white in our family. So how are we the same as somebody that shows up from Africa, right? And day one, we, the, we in the same boat as them. It don't work that way. But when you're not part of a faction, you start to believe this type of stuff to where just your skin color is going to be a faction. And you try to identify around that and you'll find out you're the only person doing that because nobody else is doing that but you. Right. Let's go to the next one. So we're going to talk about Chief Osceola. Some of y'all may not know who he is. Like I said, you're not from Florida, so you don't know Florida history. Chief Osceola was a, was a chief in Florida. Now, what I want you to understand about Chief Osceola, it's a person on the left. I don't know if they're, mirror, if they're mirroring this particular screen, but it's a person on the left with the feathers coming out of their head, right? Chief Osceola was one-third Creek, or some people call Muskegee Indian, and he was two-thirds Anglo. His mama was mixed between Muskegee Creek and Anglo, and his father was an Anglo. Some people believe his father was a Scot. He fought with the Seminoles in Florida to stop Anglos from taking Seminole land because the Seminoles was in North Florida. They got pushed down once uh, Spain gave Florida to the United States. They got pushed down to Central and South Florida. Then ranchers wanted Central Florida, so the Seminoles got pushed even farther down. So they decided to fight because they realized if we keep getting pushed down, they're going to push us into the water. Right? So you got a man that is really more Anglo than Muskegee Creek Indian, but because he was raised with the Seminoles, he had their ideology, he was part of their faction, he decided to fight against Anglos. From taking Seminole land. He didn't say, well, you know what? I'm really two-thirds Anglo. I need to be over there with them. Right? Because that wasn't his ideology. He was raised with these people. This was all he knew. 
Let's go to Quano Parker, right? Parker was one half Anglo, one half Comanche. His mother was an Anglo. She was raised with Comanche because she was kidnapped as a child. His father was full-blooded Comanche, right? Texas Rangers kidnapped his mother and his sister from his tribe, so he hated white people, right? So he didn't really, he didn't even really know he was Anglo, right? He led a faction of Comanche against Anglos to attempt to take the Southern Plains. When he found out he was Anglo, he didn't care because all he knew was bad blood between Anglos and Comanches because why he was raised with Comanches. So he didn't come out, well, you know what? I'm mixed. I'm going to play both sides. That wasn't a faction he was a part of. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? So this idea that just your skin color is going to determine how you're going to see everything, we know that's not true because we got black people that's doing everything under the sun. Every slave revolt in this country was informed by black people to white people. Hell, even when uh, John Brown came down from the Midwest, either Kansas or Missouri, he went to Virginia to try to free slaves. Black people told on him. So you got to get out of this idea that just because somebody got the same skin color as you, they got the same ideology as you. It don't work that way. It never has and it never will. So the question you want to ask yourself is what faction? So both men were part of factions that were not just about race and ethnicity. Especially when we look at Chief Osceola, who prob, prob, really was a white man. Right? Chief Osceola really was a white man. But because he spent so much time with the Seminoles, right, he didn't identify with them at all. Because that's not who raised him. That's not the culture he had. Yada, yada, yada. But their, their faction was not just about their race and their ethnicity. It wasn't. So I think we got to really start examining why people are trying to stick us into factions that's just strictly going to be around our race. And then they're allowing everybody else to come into it, but we can't keep nobody out of it. And they're in it just by showing up in America. How does that work? Right? Because if everybody can be part of what you're part of, you ain't in nothing. That's a fact. So let me keep going. So what do you want done in the real world and how can you create a faction to get that done? That's a question you want to ask yourself. Right? What do you want in the real world and how can you create a faction to get that done? What do you what problems are you looking to get solved? How can you group up? So last Saturday, I went to um like to taste the Southwest, right? So there's a faction of black men in Southwest Atlanta. And what they did was they put together like a taste of Atlanta by Greenbrier Mall. And what they what it allowed them to do was that it's trying to help bring some economic activity to this mall, things of that nature. It's a faction of guys doing that. It's not everybody in Southwest is not doing that. It's these group of people that decided we want to try to help economically improve this area. We want to show that this area is economically viable, right? Because really that area is right by Atlanta. So it could be a good area to live in because it's really not that far from the city. The problem is that it's economically depressed or it's not at the level that it should be. But it's going to take a faction to get that done, right? Because it's going to take a faction to have to go to the city of Atlanta or have to go to Fulton County and make sure that resources are getting spent in that area to improve that area. It's not going to be done by the masses of people because, you know, the masses of people are caught up in what they're caught up in. So you want to look at yourself. How do you create a faction so you can get what you want to get done in the real world? Let me go to the next one. Let me get rid of this banner real quick. So the Internet stuff is designed to keep masses of people distracted and non-competitive. All of these little internet groups, they're cool, but nothing's going to come out of the come out of it in the real world, right? They're just cool little internet groups, right? What's the real world application to what we're doing? And you look at, you know, um, these guys was red pill, blue pill. Then they was Samuelites. And when I call them Samuelites, they was disciples of Kevin Samuels. Then now they became passport bros. Now the money done dried up, all that, all that pandemic money done dried up so people can't travel like they used to. The money getting tight. So we're going to figure out in 2024 what they're going to be next. Right? Same thing with the chicks. This the lane they was in. Now they, you know, first it was, I'm independent. Now they remade that into now they're the center of men. Well, I thought you was independent. So what's the problem? Didn't you already do that? Didn't you already decenter man by being independent? But now we're going to remarket being independent while we're going to decenter men. You ain't just decentering men was trying to go live in that house that men built. You're not decentering men when it's time to drive down that road that men built for you. You're not decentering men when it's time to go get that car fixed. 
right? But we've taken, I'm independent. I don't need a man to now they remarket that into the center of man. This is just internet stuff. They're going to keep just keep doing this. They're going to keep spinning this over and over again until time stands still. So what I want you to understand is that this stuff is created to keep people distracted and not competitive because there's a fixed amount of resources in our economy, right? If you're not competing for those resources, you're never going to get them. So the goal is to make sure that you never compete for them is to just figure out how to make you not competitive because there's only a fixed amount of resources, okay? The resources you want to be competed for by real world factions. We live in the United States of America. There are factions that are competing for resources. They're competing for advantages in society. They want their group to win and they want other groups to lose. Right? You got to realize that's how the world really works. Nobody's coming to save your group and nobody's coming to save you as an individual. It's not going to happen. They'll throw you some charity and keep it pushing. The resources you want to be competed for by real world factions. Okay? So you're going to need a faction, all my pro reparations people. You're going to need a faction to get reparations. Going to have to work in the real world. It just can't be something on the internet, right? If you want things to improve for women, you got to create a faction. Because if you notice, none of these Anglo women's groups are talking about things that happen to women outside of the United States because they don't care. They got what they want to get in the U.S., right? They're not talking about all the women that's being killed as a result of these Israeli missions in the Gaza. That's killing a lot of women. They ain't going to talk about that. Because I ain't got nothing to do with them. They got what they want to get out of the U.S. So what I want people to understand is that the resources that you want to be competed with are real world factions. And if you're not a member of that faction, it's very unlikely they're going to include you. Because they're competing to make sure their faction is good. So APAC wants money for Israel. APAC's not thinking about me and my faction. So me and my faction don't have it. They don't care because they don't care about that anyway. They care about their faction. Right? Um... Charlie Kirk and the white Christian nationalists, they're competing for what they want. They don't care if I'm left out in the cold. I'm not a member of their faction. So they're trying to influence government to get what they want. You got um, the governor of the state of Florida. He's part of this faction, and they're trying to change things in the state of Florida because they want things to go the way they want it to go. They don't care if I get left out in the cold because I'm not a member of their faction. So you got to really understand how the world really works. And so what I want to encourage you to do is if you decide that I have a problem with my needs are not getting met in the environment, how can I join a faction or maybe I need to build a faction to get my needs met? Because it don't have to be big. It can be small and still get it done. Because what we talked about is something Katrina talked about. Often as a faction gets bigger, what happens is you start getting factions inside the faction. But that's what we got inside the United States. The United States is a large population of people with multiple factions. As the faction that you're in starts to get bigger, you start to get factions inside the faction because why? People start feeling like they're not getting they're not getting their needs met. So it creates a power structure inside the faction. Often the faction will fall apart, it will splinter, and it starts all over again. That's just a dialectic. That's going to happen. But you got to start that process to put yourself in a position to get anything. And you can keep the group small. There's an interview that Bobby Steele or Bobby Seal did, the guy that helped found the Panthers. He said the worst thing they did was they let the Panthers get outside of Oakland. Because he said when the Panthers was in Oakland, they knew everybody. He said once they got outside of Oakland, everybody started joining. He said, we didn't know who these people were. And that's what messed up the Panthers. So sometimes it's better to keep the group small so you can regulate who's in the group than to let the inner circle blow up and you don't know who's in it. That's why the Communist Party of China is only 10% of the population. Most Chinese people are not communists. They never going to let that group get big like the Republican and Democratic Party because why? They don't want everybody in that group. It's for a small group of people that are dedicated to what they're doing. Right? We got millions of people thinking they're Republicans and Democrats. The question is, what can you get done in that organization? If you can't get none done in that organization, you're not in there. Because the people that are actually part of that organization, they can get things done. So we're going to read these comments. We're going to read these questions. Um, let me see right here. If anybody got anything they want to talk about, they could come up. And then we're going to get up on out of here. Appreciate everybody for coming through on a Saturday. We put that in the stream and we're going to keep going. So Copeland Checks TV, man, I appreciate the 199 Super Chat. Ray Gun, man, what's going on? Big up to East Atlanta. Appreciate the 299. 
and Brian Ashe. Appreciate the 1999 super chat. Right. Let me pin this. Yeah, they putting that heart over everything. So Copeland checks, man. What's going on with Detroit? What part of uh Detroit are you from? Miss Phoenix, what's up going on in Toledo, Ohio? What's going on in Margate, Florida? JLD, what's going on? What's going on in Central Florida? A satisfying world, what's going on? Miss Evelyn here, what's going on for Atlanta? Thank you for coming to the event. Uh Aunt Johnson, I'll be investing in your product soon. Do what you got to do. Uh Anthony Bass, what's going on? Mc McDrama Bear, appreciate it. Alonzo, the All-Star Advisor, what's going on with you, man? So, Ann said, you're getting ready to live in Stafford. There's plenty of opportunities to build long money here. Houston, there's a lot of money in Houston. You know, we're not going to front on that. It's a lot of money in the Houston area. So, that's the reality. Let me see this real quick. Okay, so that's pinned. So, anybody want to come in comments, let me know. It's pinned in the chat. Katrina says the CBC doesn't even advocate for all black federal congressional members. And they definitely don't. I think they're a very ineffective group, but I think they're effective to themselves. Because one thing about them is they probably figured out how to create longevity for their career in politics, which is what I think is what it's about. I don't know what else they're doing. Um, I haven't seen them be effective, but I don't know. Uh, but I just think they're effective to make sure to make sure that they have longevity as politicians. You know, I, that's probably why I would wrap it up. But big up to them. What's going on with Erica? Classic clown, smartphone money. That's why new young folks call themselves follower of Christ. I feel I call myself a believer. I understand what the term Christian means, but I call myself a believer. But everybody, you know, they got their own colloquialism. But I think one thing we need to sit down one day, I'm not talking about you personally, is believers need to really sit down and understand like how Western Europeans have um, changed a lot of the perspectives around the word to make it what they want it to be. There's a certain term for that. And I forgot what that term is called. Um, and I think a lot of times they put it through a prism so it could be what they wanted to be, but it doesn't necessarily have a biblical foundation. But I don't want to turn this into church with y'all. Right. So I understand why people are saying that. So Erica says, identify with everyone, the last name Williams. Let's get it. Y'all believe it's a lot of people, too, especially in the Northeast. People be amazed how many people got the last name Williams. Like it's a lot. You know, I can't. It, I don't know any time I wasn't in school. Well, it wasn't at least one more Williams in my class. Like it's a lot of people with the last name Williams. Eric, I mean, Katrina says I'm with the make money community. I agree with you. I'm with the make money community too. I agree with you. So we got Anthony. We got a call on. Let me go ahead and connect my uh, headphones real quick. My bad for not being prepared. You can hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Dave. How are you, sir? I'm doing all right. How you feel? I'm doing well. Hey, Dave, I have a question. Is the CBC only one party or is it both parties, Republican and Democrat? I wouldn't know. I'm not an expert on them. So I just I just noticed something called a Congressional Black Caucus, but their actual political breakdown as a party, I wouldn't be able to tell you. So I wouldn't want to start making stuff up. Okay. No, because someone brought up in the chat, so I wasn't sure if you knew. Like you do your research about that type of stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't know. So like I said, I wouldn't want to tell you off the top of my head, but that's something that could probably be easily researched, but I wouldn't know how they skew um, as a Republican and Democrat. I wouldn't be able to tell you off the top of my head. Well, what is this? Uh, what is your, what do you mean by what faction you belong to? Like, can you, did you watch, what, did you watch the video? Uh, I just jumped in the chat. Okay, so we, we define faction by, since you just jumped in the chat, we define faction by organized group within a larger group. That's the definition that we're using for this particular discussion. Okay. Um, that, that's hard for me to, dis like, I don't, I don't put myself in, in a faction. It's weird. I'm part of the larger group. Okay. To be honest. Like, I, 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 I'd rather not box myself into one portion of one 
one section of a certain subject or a certain political party and stuff like that. Okay. So, so it, it's easier. It's I think it's easy if you're part of the whole group instead of a faction. It's easier to get stuff done. Do you agree? No, I disagree. So that's pretty much what the video was about. So I believe, so did you say if you're part of the faction or you're part of the larger group? I want to make sure I don't misunderstand what you said. Oh, uh, no. I, what I was asking was, don't you think it would it would get, like, being part of a faction makes it hard to get get, get stuff done. But if you're part of the larger, larger group, wouldn't it be easier to get stuff passed? Or, like, let, let's focus on politics specifically. Instead of being like box into one fashion how about like being part of a larger group try to get stuff done that you want to get past because being part of that fashion can actually hurt your cause in the long run because you're 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 basically boxing yourself in and you're you're for you're forcing yourself like you're you're how do you know me, do you understand what i'm saying, I understand what saying but let me okay i understand what you're saying but let me ask you a question how large do you think APAC is? If you understand what do you know who APAC is? I've heard of them, but because they're I, a group that they're a group that lobbies to make sure that Israel gets funding. Oh, the the that that Jewish uh the Jewish thing. The, yeah, so, the, the, so, so, so if you've never heard of them, then they're probably not that large, right? But they're they, Israel's our largest foreign aid recipient, and that's primarily done by lobbying of APAC. So then the okay. question I would ask you, and even though this one example probably couldn't cover all bases is that with APAC being so small that you've never heard of them. But one of the things that they're successful at is making sure that Israel is the largest recipient of United States foreign aid in the history of the United States. So they're very effective at getting what they want done as a small group of people. Yeah, no. And, and it's because when you look at the people who are part of that faction, like, it's Shay, Sheldon Adelson and like but, but, the, what the I'm rich. trying to, but it's not who's in it. What I'm trying to get you to understand is that I don't agree with you that a faction group needs to be large to be effective. Cause I can show you multiple examples of groups that are effective in government that are very small groups of people, but they're very effective. Yeah. Right? The lobby, so the, it's as because a, as lobbying a lobbying organization. Money. Exactly. It's more so, about the money and funding than, than the actual people like to, to be, what you're saying is more about the funding and the money than their actual p political pool. It's more they're bribing the politicians to support their. Uh, yeah, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't say that. So what I want to encourage you to do is next time you come in, uh, watch the video. And then when you come in, you'll have a better understanding of what we're talking about. So that you can hit the ground running because then what yeah, I'll yeah, be I'm forced a, to I, do. Sometimes I, I just jumped in because I, I just came from out of town. Understand. Like so what I'm going to do is I'm going to encourage you to, for the next time, it's kind of like in college, make sure you're prepared when you come to lecture. Okay. So then when we have the discussion part of the particular uh, content, you can kind of make sure you're up to speed to what we're talking about. So then what I don't have to do is go through everything again to get you up to speed. But I appreciate you coming in, man. I want to wish you the best. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate thank it. you for explaining what you were talking about. No problem. Take it easy. Okay. So we're going to get back to the comments. Let me see. I think we have Alexander. So Erica, again, everybody with the last name Williams in the Southeast, I'm with the Make Money community. The so-called flat black community, yes, a big thing in America is just flattened black people across the board. Katrina says, I was watching a show with a woman and her Nigerian husband had financial issues, according to her, because they we are different blacks. Yeah, I mean, that's a big thing. They're not Nigerians either, but that's a whole other conversation, right? JLD says, Puerto Ricans would get us together quick in the military when we would assume they were black. Yeah, definitely. Dominicans the same way. Now, Puerto Ricans is mixed, though, but they don't identify as black. And the reason why they don't identify as black is because they don't want to be identified with black people. And I get it. You know, that's why I'm trying to force them people to be black. Katrina says this factions wanted to tax wealth too. Yeah, definitely.
So JLD says, reminds me of Tuberville hold up promotions. He'll hold up on people getting promoted due to advancing his group viewers on uh, sexual reproductive health. Yeah. He also lives in Florida, but represents Alabama, which I don't know how he does that. He must keep a certain amount of time in Alabama. So girls of pearls, man, appreciate the $10 super chat. JLD, man, appreciate the $5. What's up to Gary, Indiana? Dame Dash supposedly doing a lot of investing in that particular area. Um, I don't know. You know, I wish I could do a video on Gary. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to work out for him, but big up to him. He's trying to do something. So he got a politician out there in Gary that he's working with to try to build up Gary. So he's trying to do a faction in that area. Uh, people that's in Gary, because we ain't trying to be disrespectful to Gary. Do you think it can ever become, I forgot what that particular name is, but it's like when you're a suburb of a larger city because we know they're right outside of Chicago, right? So can that ever be the play to live in Gary and work in Chicago and go back to Gary, right? Because my question is with Gary, Gary was based on a, a manufacturing footprint. How do we build Gary back up without that manufacturing footprint? But yeah, Dame Dash working with a politician out in Gary trying to get uh, Gary back on his feet. So big up to them. He, at least he's doing something, you know, big up to him. So Cynthia McKinney talked about the CBC just to do what they're told. I feel you. So Katrina says he may still be on the Alabama payroll. Yeah, you're right about that. They filed them coaches. And uh, they keep they keep money coming in. But I heard he live in Florida, but he represents Alabama. But, you know, they do stuff like that. He's a great trader, too. So that's pretty much going to be it, man. I want to appreciate everybody for coming through. A uh, big up to everybody that put in a super chat. I uh, just want to encourage y'all to, you know, think about what you're involved in in the real world and how you can use that to get what you want uh, and not kind of get distracted by a lot of this stuff on the Internet unless they're taking it off the Internet and put it into the real world. Right. Because the, the country's controlled by factions. That's my argument. You can have a different argument, but let's have a discussion on it based on kind of what we talked about today. So hope you got some value from it. David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. Talk to you later.